forward. Wow. Yeah, wow. We had no notice. Um, the, the first notice of, uh, that we needed to, to leave was the fire. And on our phone, we got alerts the next day saying that we needed to evacuate this area. I, I believe we should have been evacuated the days before. I, I think that was necessary. Um, with the amount of fuel and the, the temperatures here and the dry conditions, um, it was just too risky. It, it was just minutes and everything was engulfed. It, it took no time at all. It was moving so fast. But a lot depends on the fire behavior, and that's why it's, it's imperative that people in these areas and around their homes be aware of the fire. And again, if they feel the need, please don't wait for an evacuation notice. Get out when it's reasonably um, calm and easy. Oh, I would way rather evacuate days and stay in a motel than to literally be running for my life. By six o'clock, the fact that anybody was out there, uh, it's just not fair. And uh, I, it shouldn't have been the case because, you know, by 7.30, everything was in extreme danger. And, you know, eight o'clock, it was already done. 50 foot flame taken out of the neighborhood next door was my evacuation notice. You know, I always got my phone on and uh, yeah, my phone never went off. Never saw a police officer in our neighborhood. Um, saw him hitting the main stretch of the road as we're all leaving in bumper to bumper traffic, but uh, it definitely, you know, we didn't receive a notice. Our notice was common sense and uh, fight or flight. Again, this was very peculiar fire behavior, according to the fire cooperators. Uh, this was a very fast moving fire and in some instances with the being driven by the wind that the fire generates in itself plus weather conditions you could have the fire jumping out ahead of miles we were doing the absolutely best that we could with the amount of personnel to get out into these neighborhoods but sometimes that fire gave people only minutes to get out the roads were extremely congested with two lane roads being basically two lanes of one-way traffic of people trying to get out. I know that there were evacuation notices being given in some of those areas, either by PA or by um, going door to door. Well, we were uh, watching television about the fire that was on 24 hours a day. We were sitting there watching it, and here comes a knock on the door. A police, I look out there and there's a police car going, start red light, sirens. Because you have to get out, you have to get out now. There is no color in the skies above Lake Elsinore. Fire crews warning each other of the relentless flames. Hey! Backyards on fire! Law enforcement rushing to get people to safety. And residents wondering if life will ever be the same. It is nightmare. It's, it's so horrible. I just want this to be over. Annie Sperling moved from San Diego County to the McVicker Park neighborhood in Riverside County eight years ago. In her entire time here, she's never seen anything like this. Never will think it's going to burn like that. Her view from her backyard is now singed mountainscape. Even large aircraft disappear into the thick black smoke. This property has already been sprayed down with pink fire retardant, as you can tell by the palm trees in their backyard. But take a look beyond this gate. The fire is still approaching this property. Fire trucks are parked on every driveway along Edgewood Street. Crews studying the fast approaching flames. Neighbors who hope to ride it out are now leaving everything behind. Sperling's eyes start to water. It's the emotions, the fatigue. Wind, smoke, everything together. Four devastating days of watching and praying. She hopes it ends soon. There's no place to go for me, but, you know, we'll figure something out. Good afternoon from CBS 2 and KCAL 9. We have breaking news in the Holy Fire. This is this fire that's burning out of control in Orange and Riverside County. Uh, Lake Elsinore, some of the neighborhoods there are under immediate threat right now. We want to go live to our Nicole Comstock. She's standing by. And Nicole, I know you're in this neighborhood, McVicker Canyon, where the, the flames are just getting dangerously close to some of the homes. 
Yeah, it really flared up out here in Lake Elsinore in the McVicker Canyon Park neighborhood just about maybe uh, 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago now. And if you take a look behind us here, you can see the flames from the Holy Fire that are just ripping up that hillside there. And this is nothing compared to what it looked like out here, like I said, about 40 minutes ago when flames were much closer to these homes, really right up on uh, the backyards of these houses and you can see the flames shooting up all the way past uh, two story homes out here, which by the way, at that point still had at least one neighbor out here standing on top of his roof just down the street over there by I believe it is Edgewood Court hosing off his shingles on the roof with the flames shooting up right in his face, still trying as best as he could to protect his home. Now, from what we saw right before we left just around the corner there, it seemed like the flames still did stop at the fire retardant line that was put down there yesterday. But for a moment, it looked just crazy there, like an inferno burning in between all of these houses right behind them. Um, it was really because the flames were deep down in the canyon and coming uphill. So they were extremely tall and sending off a lot of thick black smoke. So the neighbors that eventually moved back into the neighborhood yesterday to kind of keep an eye out on the fire and see what was going on, uh, they started running away from their homes again because they didn't expect it to come up at them that quickly, guys. Exploding in the mountains, it's not just the size of the holy fire that worries firefighters. The speed and strength of these flames are the biggest threat. With new evacuations ordered, the inferno is just uphill from subdivisions in Riverside County. This, police say, the work of an arsonist. Investigators say this man, Forrest Clark, ignited the blaze. Just before his arrest, he spoke to a photographer. Do you know how this fire started? I have no idea. I was asleep. I had two earplugs in. With a dozen large fires burning in California, the U.S. Forest Service says 90% of wildfires are human caused. In Redding, where 2,000 structures are destroyed, another firefighter, the seventh this year, was killed on duty. Afternoon winds have been fanning flames all day long. They're pushing small embers up to two miles away. That's igniting brand new fires. With fires on pace to burn more land than ever before, toxic smoke is choking much of the state. The dangerous air also blinding the air attack. Where for now, this is the best way to slow an unstoppable force. Firefighters say there is so much fuel from this blaze, it'll likely burn for weeks, if not months. The left was, was right there, and they're hoping the fire will spread to the top of the hill and then sort of smolder, and they can maybe get some sort of stoppage. They won't get containment. It's just too big for that. It's burning away from the homes. That is good news. They did lose a couple of structures. They may have been homes, though, in that Holy Jim Canyon area. Hi, I'm Dan Ashley in the ABC 7 Newsroom. I want to share something really interesting with you. A young bear rescued in the car fire in the Redding area is undergoing unique therapy. Take a look at this video. Vets are using sterilized tilapia skins to help heal the bear's burned paws. A crew working to fix damaged utility poles in the fire zone spotted this cub Thursday licking her burned paws. Poor thing. You can see how badly burned they were. They called wildlife experts. State wildlife officers took this video of the bear. The same fish skin therapy was used on two bears burned in last December's Thomas fire in Southern California. State wildlife officers uh, hope that this therapy will be effective in this case. Those two other bears uh, did heal and they were released back into the wild. And that is certainly the hope and expectation for this young bear rescued in the car fire near Redding that this was going on in my neighborhood. Oh my gosh. So I had to come film it. And I'm filming what's going on.
displaced because of the fire. They're in my neighbor's yard under the tree. Oh. It's okay, you guys. I should bother them. It's okay. Oh. Yeah, you can see down to the end of the street, it's real smoky. There they go, down the street. Yeah, we're not too far from the country. There's turkeys in the country. Don't drink the. Oh, they're drinking drain water, which has pesticides and shit in it. Oh, poor turkeys. Be careful, turkeys.